Hey guys, so it is October and October is spooky season. Now for this spooky season, I decided why don't I create some paranormal story videos for you guys. So I personally believe in the paranormal and I've always been really interested in the paranormal. So I would go online and I would try to look up like real ghost stories, true ghost stories that happen to people. And back then, ghosts really weren't talked about like people didn't put their experiences online so there wasn't that many YouTube videos and there wasn't that many like websites where like, they had ghost stories and stuff now it is a lot more talked about there's millions of ghost stories I feel like on YouTube now so anyways I'm going to read some paranormal stories off of this website that I used to read all the time when I was younger and some of these can actually be pretty spooky I would get spooked out reading them and then I'll feel paranoid throughout the whole entire night so in honor of spooky season, why don't we go ahead and read some paranormal stories. Okay, so the first one is titled, At Gigi's House. When I was between four and six, my sister and I were babysat by my grandma, who we called Gigi. Gigi lived in a Victorian-style house built in 1896. Gigi was a stern, small woman, but she was nurturing. She kept us clean and well-fed like grandparents are supposed to. In fact, it seems like she was always cooking or baking something. She always had a utensil in her hand and had no problem giving you a whack on the top of your head if you got out of line. She even did it to grandpa sometimes. As I said, Gigi's house was Victorian style. There were so many rooms, doors, huge windows, and all kinds of cupboards, closets, and hiding spots your young heart could desire. Almost all of the downstairs rooms had dividers that you could pull out of a gap in the door frame to make one large room into two smaller ones. Gigi's house also had some sort of entity, and whatever this thing was didn't seem to like kids. Whether you call it a poltergeist or spirit, I honestly don't know. Though I've always been very sensitive to the paranormal, I've never had a desire to really study it. Now, as an adult, I make it a point to keep my mental walls up to protect myself, but I digress. In almost every morning I have regarding events in her house, Gigi always seemed nonchalant about it. I don't know if she believed it was supernatural and had become accustomed to it or what, but she just kept on doing whatever it was she was doing without making a comment. Later, when I was older and brought it up, she would wave it off without a word. My dad always told me speaking on terms of this nature gave it more life, so maybe she felt the same. As I said before, she spent a lot of time in the kitchen. I can remember sitting at the table with my sister and watching the cabinet doors open. They didn't open fast or forcefully, they would just swing open randomly. Oh my god, imagine you're eating breakfast and then all of a sudden the door starts like swinging open. No! It was never just one, but one after another, three or four would swing open. Gigi was short, so usually she used a handle of whatever she had in her hand close to them without even looking up. Sometimes she would have to get one of her many step stools to reach, but she never said a word about it and neither did we. How can you just ignore it? Like, I could, I could not ignore it. I feel like I, I would be terrified. I guess ignoring it would be like, you don't give it power in a way. I just don't feel like I could do that. It also liked to slam doors behind me in particular. It seemed like every time I walked out of a room or out of the house, the door would slam shut behind me. That's scary. If I walked through my room and then the door just slammed, I would jump. <laughs> Eventually, I got used to it and to always being yelled at by whatever adult happened to be near. Aww. I can remember the sound of the glass panes in the front door that it would make when it slammed. One of my more terrifying memories happened in the small mud room off the kitchen. It had a door into it from the kitchen, one leading to the backyard and one leading into the cellar. There were two girls close to my sisters and my ages who we would play with whenever they were around. They didn't live with their mother, the next door neighbor, full time, so it was always exciting when they were around. One day, I heard what I thought was one of them calling me from the backyard. I went to get my sister and we hightailed it to the back door. We made it to the mudroom before the door from the kitchen behind us slammed shut. It made us both jump and look back towards the door, but we shrugged it off and tried to open the door leading to the backyard. It was locked. These doors were old, requiring a key to lock and unlock them. So we turned around to head back into the kitchen, knowing without the key we weren't going to get outside. But now this door wouldn't open either. The kitchen door didn't have a lock on it though, and we should have been able to easily open it. At this point, I wasn't panicking. The door into the backyard had a large pane of glass in it, so I started looking outside for our friends to see if they could help. But neither of them were in the yard. 
Looking back now, I should have thought it was weird that anyone would have been in the backyard. You could only get into it from the back door or from the side privacy fence that had a padlock on it. Now I started to freak out and began yelling and alternating between trying the knob and banging on the door to the kitchen. At some point though, it just swung open. I was smacking the door with both palms and it swung open with nobody there. It felt like we were stuck in there forever and honestly I don't know how long it was but I know my throat hurt from yelling by the end. It turns out Gigi was vacuuming in one of the front rooms and had no idea what happened to us. I remember my sister and I standing in the foyer with tears running down both our faces watching Gigi wondering if I would get in trouble for saying anything but I never did bring it up. Would you get in trouble for that? I feel like... She wouldn't be mad, right? The living room, sitting room, dining room, and foyer created a circle that my sister and I were chasing each other back and forth around. We were probably being hellions, screaming and running past all Gigi's antiques. I remember hearing the word stop yelled, but I'd be lying if I said I knew for sure it wasn't Gigi that said it. I just felt like it wasn't her. What I do remember is running full speed smack into the room dividers that had been pulled shut between the sitting and dining rooms. Both sides of it had been shut completely. There was nobody who could have done it. Gigi was in the kitchen and my sister was too little to have pulled them out quickly enough before I made the lap around the room. I ended up with a bloody nose that day. Gigi had a swing on the front porch that the neighbors and I loved hanging out on. There was a large picture window behind the swing with two smaller windows that opened on each side of it. These opened in a way that you could pull a cord in the window frame and it would raise the bottom pane, leaving a gap between it and the windowsill. Gigi would prop the windows up with a six inch wooden dowel rod. While my friend and I were sitting on the swing, I put my hand on the windowsill, using it as leverage to push us since neither of us were tall enough for our feet to reach the floor. I don't remember how long we had been sitting there before the window came down on my hand. The dowel rod she used to prop open the window actually fell outside of the window onto the porch as if it had been pushed from the inside. Luckily, only my fingertips were in reach of the window when it came down. No bones were broken, but three of my fingernails turned black and blue. These sort of events happened often. I can think of so many right now, not all of which did someone get hurt though. Like when something dumped baby powder all over the bathroom one night. One of the most extreme centered around my uncle's room upstairs. I remember Gigi had been on him about cleaning his room. As a teenager, he always replied with, I did, before promptly leaving to skateboard with his friends. Finally, Gigi had had enough and decided that we were going to do it and do it right. She and I, with my little sister making more of a mess than helping, spent the entire afternoon cleaning his room. He had the typical dishes and dirty clothes laying around, but I also mostly just remember how he had stuff everywhere. Clothes, books, cassettes, just stuff all over the floor. The only odd thing I can remember about that room was that the windows looked to have condensation on them. I thought it was weird at the time because it was summer and wasn't a rainy day, why was there water on the windows? I don't remember it being cold in there and this house didn't have AC, not even a window unit. After we finished, we waited for him to come home. I remember feeling kind of smug, hands on my hips walking next to Gigi as we headed up to his room to show him how it would be done. But when she opened the door, it was the only time I could remember her acting startled about what happened in that house. Stuff was everywhere, once again. Though the trash and dishes weren't there, it looked like someone had thrown the clothes out from every drawer and the books and cassettes were all over the floor. His bedding was torn off the bed Gigi had shown me how to make just a couple hours before. I was shocked. We never actually went back into the room. She had opened the door to show him and when we saw all the mess she stood there for a second before shutting the door again. I remember looking at my uncle and he was so much taller than both me and Gigi. I look back now on the face he made and I want to think it was something like, I told you so, but maybe that's just my imagination. Like I said, there were so many things that would happen in that house and I'm sure much more was experienced by the ones who actually lived there full time. I would have to look up exactly how long they live in that house, but I do know they sold it less than six months after the bedroom incident. I don't know if that had anything to do with why they sold it when they did, but if it were me as an adult now, 
I think that would have been the last straw. Honestly, same, especially if you're a person who likes to keep things orderly and clean and just to have some like spirit just trash everything that you did, that's just frustrating. I wouldn't be scared of the spirit at that point, I'd just be mad. <laughs> okay, so this next story is more of like a psychic medium kind of story rather than like a scary paranormal kind of story, but it's one of the shorter ones that I found. So we're gonna read that one. This one is titled, What If You Knew Before It Happened? I remember this experience like it was just yesterday. At the time, I was living in a rented apartment with my mom. The area where we stayed was incredibly quiet and peaceful, and I sometimes miss living there, since now we have our own home in a different location. It started one night while I was sleeping. I was somehow in a state of being half awake and half asleep, when suddenly I saw two dark shadowy figures enter my bedroom and surround my bed. These figures looked just like the outline of a human being, but they were filled with darkness. I couldn't see any details on this being. The only thing that was obviously different between these two figures was that one seemed much taller than the other. That is horrifying. I don't care if you're dreaming. That is horrifying to imagine like these two black figures just surrounding you while you're asleep. That's horrifying. It happened so quickly. One being came to the left of me and the other to the right of my bed. I then felt them touching me simultaneously, saying clear as day, give me your money. With that, I immediately woke up, startled. I looked around, nothing was there. It was just a bad dream. Fast forward some time after having that dream, putting it far behind me, thinking, give me your money. I'm not wealthy. How can this be applied to me? My uncle shows up one day asking me if I would like to come and spend some time with him and my cousins. I agreed. I was a kind of babysitter to my younger cousins at the time, since my older cousin, their mother, had to go off to work. One day, after we all had breakfast, I felt compelled to go into the gallery. I immediately saw a white van slowly approaching the house. We had no fencing. Two suspicious-looking men came out. One was tall, the other was short. The taller man looked at me while pulling a cigarette, asking me in a sly way if my father was home. That was enough for me. I slammed the door and ran inside, advising my cousins not to go outside, and I immediately called the police. It was then that I realized the significance of my dream. So that one had like a nice ending, I feel like. At least the robbers surrounding you in your sleep and demanding money did not happen in real life. It was nice that you got a warning. It really is nice that you got a warning. Even though that dream was extremely creepy and I would have been terrified, that was at least a warning and like it kind of saved you, you know? Like that was nice. Anyway guys, this is all for today's video. If you guys want to hear some more paranormal stories, I got some more coming for the rest of October. Don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it and subscribe down below for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. How can you... Well, I guess if you don't want to... If you...